Hey guys, in this episode, another species spotlight for you. Today we're going to be covering the angelfish or Pterophyllum scalari, a classic in the aquarium hobby and some and a fish that is truly a pleasure to keep. Now, a little bit about origins as usual. We're going to go into behavior, tank size, uh, you know, community fish suitability and so forth. A little bit about feeding, water conditions, and then we'll just summarize the, the fish in general. So let's get into the origins. Now they're a fish that uh, really originates from South America, the Amazon, uh, widespread throughout the Amazon area. Um, in fact, it's, uh, you know, found in countries throughout, uh, countries such as Brazil, uh, Colombia, Peru, Guyana, etc. So it's really widespread um, and similar to most South American tropical fish uh, you know its habitat is really governed very much by the rainy versus the dry season. So in the rainy season the water levels dramatically increase. The fish is then inhabiting flooded vegetative type zones ends up as the dry season uh, causes the water to evaporate, the water levels recede, then it ends up in more shallows and so forth, and as well in rivers. So it is a fish, the point of that is that is a fish that is uh, really uh, akin to or accustomed to different environments. So it, can, it does well in both, in fact. Um, you know, one of the more natural type environments as well, like they do inhabit the Rio Negro, which is a black water river, so stained water, uh, lack of plants is quite natural to them too. And the type of structure that's there, of course, is submersed branchy type structure. They're really adept to, uh, to living in that type of environment because in fact, if you look at the angelfish, it's, it's design is a very narrow fish. It's very adept going through tangled areas and it's able to predate uh, its prey, smaller invertebrates and fish, by being an ambush type predator. Uh, the type of water flow that it's used to too varies. Obviously, in the rainy season, when the levels are high, the water flow is lower in the Mar more shallows in the flooded areas, so it, it does very nicely in lesser water movement. And then, of course, uh, in the drier season, it's exposed to really more higher currents and rivers and so forth. So, getting into a little bit about the behavior and tank size and community uh, type suitability, community tank type suitability. Um, you know, don't forget the angelfish is a cichlid and it's a predatory one in fact. So when you're thinking about mixing community fish in, avoid the really small species. You don't want small retiring shy fish. They may end up on the, the angelfish's menu as it gets bigger in particular. You want to uh, avoid fin nipping fast moving species that are going to aggravate the angels or potentially nip at their fins also not a good combination. Uh, you know, what is a good combination? Well, some of the door cichlids that get a little bit bigger, they inhabit the bottom of the area, corridors, catfish, uh, things like that, where you want fish with a little bit more size and, and inhabit different areas of the aquarium. Now, one thing you'll notice over time, uh, you know, over the many decades that, uh, that the angelfish has been around in the hobby for, of course, uh, there's been a lot of evolution in terms of different types of colors, fin shapes, and everything else. And that's led to a fish, in many cases, that's a little bit smaller, not quite as robust. Doesn't have some of the original wild characteristics that a lot of the angels have. Now, there's a lot uh, of breeders that utilize uh, wild genes in their breeding programs, and as such, there are some very good quality angelfish out there. But just to let you know, that is a difference that you see more and more with the many types of fin shapes and so forth. You may see a fish that's a little bit weaker, lesser in body size. Uh, I personally prefer the wi wild types. I think they're more attractive in my eyes, but everybody has different tastes, of course. But just to let you know, there is a difference out there, so pay attention. Make sure you get what you're looking for. Um, now, as angelfish grow and mature in an aquarium, this is an important point. I mean, tank size really for a small group of young individuals, 30 to 50 gallons, preferably more like 50 gallons. And as they mature and start to grow, or as they grow and start to mature, you're going to notice that they start to pair off. A typical cichlid behavior, so longer, taller tanks are preferable. You know, a typical 50 gallon that's like 24 inches or 60 centimeters high uh, is really the best type of aquarium uh, for them at a, at a good four feet long. Really, really uh, a preferred type of setup for uh, angels that gives more area between the, uh, the, the specimens as they grow. You can have a pair forming and the others can be tolerated. If not, you're going to be obliged to remove the other angels as they grow and establish their territory, start throwing their weight around. Now, in terms of the size of, of the scalari or the uh, the angelfish uh, they can get up to a good six inches long and seven to eight inches in height so it's not really a small fish 
It's, uh, it needs something with some vertical room, as we mentioned, so don't forget to accommodate it when you're thinking about what size of tank you want to get. In terms of feeding, angelfish are not really a fussy feeder. They adapt, even wild fish adapt quite readily to flakes, uh, granular foods, freeze-dried foods. There are some exceptions, of course. Uh, some types of wild angelfish, the altums, for example, you know, frozen foods uh, are going to be probably more mandatory on a regular basis for those fish. But in general, they adapt pretty readily and they're really easy to feed. Not really a problem at all. In terms of water conditions, again, in the originating environments, it's typically warm, soft, or acidic. So when you're, you know, thinking pH level, although they do well at 7.5. It's really beneficial to fish when you keep them in a in a more natural range for them. So we prefer six to six point five. They do well from two to ten k, ten two to ten dkh in terms of temporary hardness level. Uh, we really prefer something about five, kind of a nice midpoint, easier to maintain, buffers your pH, but it's going to allow you to keep a pH around uh, around six point five with much without much of a challenge. Now in terms of environment in your tank, I mean. Uh, you have options there, of course, in terms of plants, some of the broadleaf echinodorus, medium light level, easy to look after, a natural type of plant for them. Uh, some of the valisnerias, a taller plant that fills up the back of your tank nicely when you're going with a 60 centimeter aquarium. Uh, and they're adept at moving through that type of uh, plant cover. Those are good choices in general. Do you need plants? No, you don't. You can go with the more, you know, Rio Negro black water setup. Uh, you know, thin branches emerging into the aquarium, darker tints, some tropical sea almond leaves spread about the bottom to impart some of the beneficial tannins that those fish really enjoy. Also makes for a great uh, type of setup for them. In terms of water movement, your filtration selection, you know, go for a canister filter uh, that has some extra capacity because when those fish start to grow, and this helps you avoid uh, a lot of the problems that people experience as fish grow. You know, you buy angels, uh, they're dime size or quarter size, and before you know it, uh, they're a fish that has uh, has grown to a lot larger than that. So your filtration is going to be taxed and so forth, or you end up adding a second filter. It's another option you have as well. But uh, I would prefer to go air on the side of getting yourself a little extra capacity from the get-go. Angelfish can tolerate some water movement, so it's generally a better idea. Uh, in summary, like we said, it's a fish that's, you know, it's a founding fish almost in the tropical fish hobby. Uh, there's a lot of different color varieties, fin varieties out there today. and uh, you know, I think it's a really s good positive point that a lot of wild genes have made their way back in and you see a lot of really nice quality uh, uh, wild, close to wild type angels that are available these days. Really nice to watch the nat natural cichlid type habits that these fish have, especially when they start to breed and so forth. That's more my, uh, you know, my preference. Others may have others, but I think that it's really something that uh, blends well when you're setting up a biotope or a more natural environment for your fish. And as a last parting note, make sure to avoid mixing with fish that are fast moving or fin nippers. That's not what you want to see. In the angels may tolerate it, they may grow, they may do okay, but it's kind of a shame to see them with nip fins and things like that. It's nice to see the, the fish in its full glory. So there you have it guys, a primer on the angelfish. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment below, ask us any questions you like, and don't forget to give us a like. Thanks a lot.